Hey, my loves. So I am back for the highly requested and anticipated question, question and answer video. Um, I asked you all for questions last week. Last week? I think so. Um, in one of my videos, I posted a picture on Instagram. I've also, so I compiled the answers from those two places. And then I've also um, just pulled the questions that I get asked all the time to put them in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started and answer some questions. Um, I hope you find this useful. If um, there are a lot more questions in the future, or if, or if I don't know, you guys want another Q&A uh, video in the future, we might do another one. Um, but for now, I'm just going to get started because this video is going to be rambling long enough as it is. So um, the first question that I get asked all the time is where my glasses are from and who they're by and all that good stuff. And ironically, today I'm wearing my contacts for like the first time. I think this might be the second video you see with me in contacts, but it's the first time, like I'm filming on the same day. So um, not wearing glasses. I like the glasses. They're the cat eye glasses. So they're from Tom Ford and I pulled up the uh, model number. Instead of me rambling it on because it's long, I'm just going to link it down below. I'll list it down below in the description box. So um, yeah, they're Tom Ford. They were on the campaign ad a couple years ago and I sort of walked into the optometrist's office and I was like, I want those ones and bought them without trying them on. So I lucked out that they worked because it could have um, gone the other way and that I would have paid for them and they looked horrible. So um, I love them. Thank you for telling me that you think they look cool. Um, if you are thinking about them, I say do it. At least go try them on because they're really fun and just different. And I have to wear glasses all the time because I can't see without them. Um, so I thought, why not wear something fun if I'm going to wear glasses? Okay, <laughs> question number two. The question I always get is the where are you from question, and this is going to get rambly, so brace yourselves. Um, when people ask me where I'm from, they do it for two reasons, and I can always tell where the question is coming from and the intention behind it. So on one hand, people ask me because they sort of just as a way of conversation and want to just learn more about me so we have something to talk about. And that's great, that's fine, I love that, because I would ask the same thing um, of you, it's just, it's when you're having a conversation with someone, it's nice to have some facts about them, so you can just find something in common, so you can chat, right? But the other school of thought, and the other group that asks me where I'm from, does it in a way that really irritates me, because it's in a way where they want to sort of pigeonhole you. And again, I can tell, because it's been something that I've been dealing with for a while, like I can tell where your tone and the way you asked your question, what your reason for asking it is. Um, and the, the people that ask it for the second re reason drive me crazy, because this is what happens, is that they'll ask you, and you'll give them, be like, well, I'm born and raised in Canada. No, 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 but where are you from? I'm like, Canada. No, like, originally, where are you from? I was like, I'm born in Canada. Like, I don't know what you want me to tell you. And then they go... Oh no, but like, like culturally, like where are your parents from? And it's just like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what you're saying. And then you give them the answer and like, oh, okay. And then they like walk away or they stop talking to you. Like it happens all the time. And it's like, uh, it just drives me mental. Anyways, where am I from? <laughs> I was born and raised here in Calgary. Um, I went to school for a couple years in California. Originally, where am I from? My parents have been here for almost 30 years, but originally they are from Lebanon. And so I am Lebanese Canadian. I'm not sort of hiding that fact. I just don't necessarily need to answer that question every single time it's asked to me because I don't need to be judged and I, it drives me crazy when people do that. Anyways, um, but yeah, I, that's where I'm from. And that's sort of my long ramble as to why I don't always like to answer that question one way or the other because identity is tough like it's it's a huge amalgam of a lot of different things I wrote my whole thesis on it like it's just forming identities is tough and it's like I there are parts of my Lebanese identity that I very strongly associate with and there's never a moment in time when I can sort of disassociate with that like it's gonna be part of my makeup forever but um, if you want to keep asking me where I'm from so you get the answer Lebanon for me, what is that going to tell you about me? Not very much. Like, I, when I go and visit, I see my family and I love them and I eat yummy food, but there's a lot culturally that I can't associate with because I've never really spent more than a couple months at a time there, right? So, um, I don't, I'm not ashamed or anything of any part of my background. I just, 
when you're asking me to look for a simple answer so you can pigeonhole me, it just doesn't sit well with me. Okay, I thought that wasn't going to be that long of an answer, but it was. <laughs> um, the third story that I get asked is about my veil and all that, and my hijab story, if you will. So, I wear the veil um, because I'm Muslim. Cats out of the bag. <laughs> a couple of you asked me that, and I'm like, well, that's what it is. And um, I'm going to give you my story because that's what I share here. Is stuff about me and stuff about what makes me happy and what makes me me. Um, and... I'm sharing it not to be preachy. I'm sharing it not as like this is what you should do. I'm not trying to give anyone any um, advice like I know what I'm doing. I'm just sharing my story for whatever that's worth. So here goes. Um, I was 12, which when I sat down to think about how I was going to tell the story and I remember the fact that I was 12, it sort of boggled my mind because 12 to me at 24 seems very young like the fact that I was able to make this big decision that yet just it just it baffles me when I was making that decision back then I didn't feel that young like I felt like I knew what I was doing I felt like I was mature like I you know had it together um and to some extent I sort of did but um I'm getting off topic what I'm trying to say is that 12 seems young and so that's just what it sort of happened um the way, the actual like event that triggered it, we were in the car driving to Costco with my grandparents who were here visiting us for the summer. And my little brother, if I was 12, he must have been six at the time, was sitting next to me and he was talking to my grandma. And I, there's, you know those big moments in your life um, where like everything seems fuzzy and then everything just gets really focused, like very clear in your mind as a memory? I, this, like, this is the way this memory is. So I remember being in the car, I remember everything, like, just murmur, murmur, like the Charlie Brown kinds of sounds around me. And then I very vividly remember him asking my grandma about her veil and why she started wearing it. And so, um, the hijab was not something that was sort of in my repertoire. Like, my mom didn't wear it, my aunts didn't wear it growing up. My grand, the only women I knew sort of in my family that wore it were my grandmothers, and they only started wearing it later in life, like, when they were my grandmother. Um... So he was asking her, and she says, well, you know, it's a sign of modesty, it's one of the things that, that's asked of women in the religion, um, it helps protect, you know, girls so that they're judged on their personality and not their outward appearance, and, like, a, a couple things like that, and, um, like, these are snippets I remember from that conversation. And then he asks her, well, when are girls supposed to wear, um, the veil? And she goes, oh, like, when they hit, uh, puberty. And he's six i'm 12 he's six so i don't know what sparks in his mind the fact to turn around and look at me and then ask me because these words i will never forget he turns and looks at me very seriously in the way that six-year-olds are really curious look at you and he goes well sarah then why don't you wear the hijab and i was just like i remember looking at him being very um stunned almost and and just my answer was i don't know like i don't know why not um, and he goes, oh, okay, and then he goes on with his day. Um, but it, it triggered something in me. I was 12, I matured a lot quicker than a lot of the girls in my class, um, for a variety of reasons. And so I was going through that period that we all go through, um, in puberty where it was like, you just don't know who you are and you don't know who, what to relate to or what to hang on to or all that kind of good stuff. So I remember we finally got to Costco and I called my mom and I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. Like, this, this makes sense and religion something that's always been very personal to me it's been like a personal connection between me and something bigger than me that sort of grounds me and gives me strength maybe this was the sign i needed that this is what i need to sort of to, to figure out a lot of this this inner turmoil about who i am and all that good stuff um as you can see my who i am question is a long <laughs> lifelong question um i call her and i'm all excited and she's like okay hold on i'll be there in a little bit i'm coming anyways and I was like, why is she not excited? But again, it wasn't phasing me. I was like sitting and like starting to plan outfits and all that good stuff. And my grandma's sort of really happy and supportive and smiling. But I wait for mom to get there. And then she gets there. She's like, what are you talking about? Like, this is not a decision you just make. That, like, no, like calm down. Thinking that, you know, it was like something I just sort of, you know, I don't know. I had wanted to get my ears double pierced that summer too. She was thinking it was one of those things. So... Once she figures out that that's not what I'm talking about, she's like, Kate, this is not a conversation we're going to have here in the Costco. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about it when we get home. And what followed was like, it, fe it felt like a long time, but I want to say it was probably no more than a week, 10 days of like conversations back and forth with both my parents about, you know, like, you can't do this, you're too young, you don't know what you're getting into, this is a lifelong decision. 
um, it came from a place of love and I think and I know care and compassion and um, I think there were bigger political things going on um, so this is 2002 so there are bigger political things going on that at 12 I wasn't completely aware of they were just worried that I would be judged um, based on this sort of symbol that was very outward um, in terms of things like job interviews or university interviews or or what have you they just didn't want me to deal with a lot of hate that I probably at that moment wasn't sort of aware of but they were just really sweet and we like talked it out and talked it out and nothing was changing my mind and um, what finally happened was we were driving out to Edmonton one day and I was sort of sitting by myself downstairs in the living room and um, just sort of still moping and then I'm like you know what I'm done like I'm making this decision this is a decision I'm only supposed to make as an adult so I'm gonna show them that I'm an adult and I can make this decision um, and so I went upstairs and I put on a skirt and my mom had this really long blouse uh, like with long sleeves and like longer um, and it had I think like 101 Dalmatians on the back or something and I put that on and then we had some of these like two-piece sort of cotton veils but they were yellow and they had lace on them like it was just like, so beautiful and I put them on and I sat downstairs and I waited for her to come and then when she came I got in the car and she's like what are you doing I'm like nope this is it like I now walked outside dressed like this I'm not going back and she's like what I'm like nope that's it we're done and she's like, okay. So we drove three hours, or three and a half, four hours out to Edmonton. And my uncle saw me for the first time, and he was like, trying to be so sweet and supportive, but like, I wish I had a picture of how ridiculous I looked. Because it wasn't the veil that was really, it was like this weird mishmash outfit that just like, anyways, they were all so sweet and supportive. And that weekend my mom actually did take me, we, had, we went um, and got a bunch of actual pretty veils. We got some like ones with little flowers on them. And we spent all weekend sort of in the hotel room, like, trying them on and trying different styles and all that and I remember that was the summer and so I feel like this could have been a video on its own this one question <laughs> um that was the summer and so the big sort of test for my strength and for for how I would deal with things I guess was the first day of school and I was a little bit nervous but I'd been going to school with these like it's the eighth grade I think seventh or eighth grade and I'd been going to to school with these same kids since I was three um so I wasn't too, too worried, but I was still sort of apprehensive. And I remember we went the whole day and no one said anything. And by the end of the day, I like looked at a couple of them because we were like sitting outside at recess or something at like three. And I was like, is no one going to say anything? Like, are you all blind? <laughs> like, what is happening? They were like, oh, well, we just thought, you know, when you're ready to talk about it, you're going to talk about it. You're still the same you. It's not like you've changed. And in that moment, I knew it was going to be okay. So here I am 12 years later, which is crazy to think. Um with that, something that I may or may not be judged for on a, on a given daily basis, but it's something that just is very personal to me and um, as I've grown sort of my whole, I, my, 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 my spirituality is how I refer to it, has sort of grown with me and it's really, really something that I have, I don't have problems answering questions about, but it's just, I'm not, I don't want to sound ever preachy and I don't want to sound preachy because I don't like that personally and then on the other hand I would almost have preachy because it's a personal thing to me as in like it's a personal connection between me and something that sort of grounds me when things get tough um so yeah that's my story <laughs> it got really rambly there but anyways again not trying to, to give any sort of concrete advice or this is what you should do or this is what you should follow but just sort of share what my whole deal is okay question I hope that the rest of them are going to be this um I think I tried to organize them so we got some levity uh question number four was God asked me who my historical role model or figure was someone that I admire and wish to follow I've spent a whole week thinking about this question and I can't come up with a good answer because I don't know I I don't really do the whole like I had to answer a very similar question when I was applying to universities and I had a really hard time because I like certain things about certain people. Like I love um, Sheryl Sandberg's lean in mentality. Um, I love how selfless Mother Teresa was. I love how amazing and how inspiring my mom is and how brave my sister is. I just, everyone at the end of the day is a human being and so the idea of like putting someone on a pedestal just doesn't, I don't know doesn't hold for me so I don't know I would love to go and attend a ball with Anna Karenina I'd love 
to steer the vivacia, um, I would, um, with Althea, I would love to go hang out with Eric and Suki. Um, <laughs> but those are all characters from some of my favorite books. Um, I don't know if I have one person I sort of can admire to and hold to that kind of standard. So that's my answer in my own way. <laughs> um, question five is if you could have any superpower, what would it be? I would be able, to, April asked me this one, is I would want to fly um, because I hate flying. I get very nervous flying and so if I could fly that would just take a huge anxiety out of my life and I could go and visit people I loved without feeling crippled by fear. <laughs> um, Question six, also by April, is who's your favorite Disney princess? That is a good one. Um, I think I like Mulan the best because she's sort of pretty kick-ass and did things her own way and yeah. I'm going to go with Mulan. <laughs> um, and the other question that April asked is are you a cat or dog person? Okay, so I think dogs are the cutest thing. Um, my friend just got a dog and... We've been hanging out and taking her out for walks and stuff, and I think they're adorable. But I don't think I have the disposition needed to give enough energy to a dog. They're a lot of attention. Um, they need a lot of, like, one-on-one -on -one time, and I just, I, it's not in my DNA to, to have that much. I think I'm going to have to change once I have kids, but, like, I don't do well with something that that's, that, that is that needy. Um, so I'm gonna say, like, I really want a cat, and I'd probably be more of a cat person, because, like, as long as I fed the cat, changed its litter box, we could, like, go on and have our separate lives, and, like, come and cuddle every so often, but, like, she can do her thing, and I can do my thing, and we can all be pals, and it's not, like, it's codependent. So, that's my answer. Um, question eight. Oh, I wish I remember who wrote this question. I think it was on Instagram, but I can't remember. Um, is what do you like to do on weekends? So I sleep in. I go look at makeup. <laughs> I go to the movies. What else do I do on weekends? I run errands, which is the most boring thing ever. So I'm not including that in my list. Um, I go to the movies. I go to the library all the time. I like to see friends and just... I don't know. I, I'm on a schedule five days a week when I'm at work. So on the weekends... Oh, I also film YouTube videos, obviously. <laughs> um... But I like as much as possible to have no schedule, no alarm kind of days on the weekend because I think, I think I need that. I think we all need that every so often. Um, nine is when do you start wearing makeup? It will be a year in June. So June 2013. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I started wearing makeup and so it's been a year of that. I actually started, my mom, I think I've t told the story before, but they're having an event at uh, Shoppers Drug Mart, which I've taken you into. They're having like a beauty event, so you, tickets were $10, the proceeds went to charity. Um, and you got, I think, like $5 back in coupons. And they had all the different brands with brand representatives doing makeovers. So I got, she had uh, picked Benefit for me and Dior for my sister. And after I got my makeup done, I was like, this is fun. Like, I could get into this and play with colors and lipstick. Oh my goodness. Um, so it started from there. And it was less about, like, I liked how my face looked in the makeup and more as, like, I had so much fun playing with makeup when I was there that um, it, I was hooked. <laughs> Um, okay, so, il y a des questions en français, there are some French questions, so I'm going to read them and answer them in French, and then I will translate into English. Et pour tous mes abonnés France, pour tous mes abonnés françaises, j'adore quand vous me laissez des commentaires en français, j'ai beaucoup besoin de pratiquer la langue, donc merci beaucoup quand vous laissez des questions en français, j'apprécie beaucoup, beaucoup. Donc la première question, ou des commentaires, uh, ma première question. C'est, j'aimerais te demander comment et où tu as pris un français aussi parfait. Donc, merci beaucoup, Laura. <rire> Ce n'est pas parfait. Euh, J'essaie de pratiquer le plus possible. Donc, euh, je suis éduquée au lycée. Euh, J'ai passé euh, la maternelle, l'élémentaire et le lycée jusqu'à mon brevet au lycée français ici, à Calgary. Et donc, c'est là où j'ai appris la langue. Ensuite, euh, j'ai indépendamment appris mon bac français. Et je suis allée à, à Montréal pour prendre l'examen. Mais je voulais vraiment finir mon éducation. Et donc, euh, au-delà de, des cours en anglais que je prenais pour l'école normale, j'ai pris euh, mes cours par distance pour mon bac, 
pour réussir mon bac. Puis à l'université, j'ai pris quelques cours en français pour continuer ma langue. Et maintenant, j'essaie de regarder des vidéos, de lire des blogs, de lire des livres. J'ai vraiment besoin d'utiliser la langue car je trouve que je l'oublie très rapidement sinon. Ok, in English. Uh, Laura was asking me um, how I learned um, French and she called it pretty perfect and I don't know if I agree with that at all. Um, I went to a French lycée, which is like a French Parisian, not immersion. And so it means like they import their um, a whole curriculum. Like we learn the French program, we might as well be in France type thing. And then they bring in all the teachers from France. So I learned there, I was there from the time I was three till the ninth grade. And then independently on top of my own studies at like normal high school, I took my um, French baccalaureate uh, courses so I could take my exam and I had to fly out to Montreal to take those exams. So I did that and then in university um, I took a couple courses to keep up with the language and um, and yeah I now just try to practice as much as possible because language is hard to, to keep grips on if um, you don't practice it. Okay so question number 12 also from Laura et en français. Uh, comment fais-tu pour être toujours aussi positive et si joyeuse? J'imagine que ce n'est pas toujours facile de garder sa joie et ce sourire constamment. Tu as, tu as à voir uh, des façons de te motiver. Tu as besoin d'avoir, je crois. Uh, tu m'inspires beaucoup à être une personne plus heureuse et joyeuse. Merci encore une fois tellement, Laura. Tu es super. Laura a un blog excellent que je vais mettre dans la barre d'infos. Um, J'étais toujours une personne contente, mais une personne très optimiste avec le sourire, c'était pas toujours moi. Et il y a un jour à l'université où euh, j'ai eu un moment de réflexion. J'étais à une université que moi j'ai choisie, que j'aimais beaucoup. Et avec, avec juste beaucoup de choses positives dans ma vie et j'étais complètement déprimée. Et à ce jour-là, j'ai des moments où c'est une dépression, pas une dépression extrême, euh, extrême mais une dépression cependant. Et, et j'ai des périodes comme ça. Euh, mais dans ce moment à, à l'université, j'ai décidé que je ne voulais pl plus être comme ça, toujours triste et toujours euh, fixant sur les choses négatives dans la vie. Je voulais vraiment être heureuse et apprécier toutes les énormes moment de, de positivité dans ma vie. Donc c'est ça que je, ce que j'ai commencé à faire. J'ai commencé à activement euh, mettre un focus sur les choses positives dans ma vie et essayer de mon plus à oublier et à let go les choses plus négatives dans la vie. Donc les choses que j'utilise pour m'aider avec ceci, c'est les, les three points positivity que je fais tout le temps chaque jour pour vraiment solidifier dans ma tête les choses, les excellentes choses que j'ai dans ma vie qui sont positives, qui sont des sources euh, de, de joie. Euh, J'essaye aussi d'être de, euh, avec des personnes positives et qui m'apportent de la joie dans la vie euh, et pas être toujours avec des personnes très négatives. Uh, la troisième stratégie, si vous voulez, c'est de faire des choses qui m'apportent beaucoup de joie. Uh, comme le make-up, comme sortir avec tes copines, comme lire. J'essaye de, de, de mettre encore une, une, um, beaucoup d'énergie sur des choses qui m'apportent de la joie. Donc, uh, pas tous les jours sont excellents, uh, mais j'essaye de, de mon mieux de mettre un focus sur le positif. Okay, so Laura asked me, who has an amazing blog, who I'll link down below. She asked me how I stay so positive and how I keep my smile and what I use to motivate myself. So I have not always been this sort of chipper, happy, upbeat person. Um, I still struggle with periods of depression. Nothing so super severe that I need to be medicated for. But I still have um, periods of mild depression. It's just, it's it's in my nature. Um, so no... no two days are the same and not every day is perfect. But I made a decision back at university when I realized that I was in a place that I chose at an institution that I loved with a lot of great blessings in my life. And I was so severely unhappy. I had a moment where I was like, I'm done. Like I need to be happy. I need to appreciate, I need to love. And so what I do is I try my best to focus on the positive. So I do my three points of positivity. I surround myself with positive people 
and I really try to let the negatives go and I also just do things that I love that bring me happiness so be it makeup or reading or sleeping in or whatever I just try to my very best to to work on the positive and I think I had a great teacher that once said that positivity and practices and positivity are a practice they're never going to be perfect no two days are going to be the same so um, you just have to work on that practice and cut yourself slack when um, you don't get it right because you're not always going to get it right. And then two more questions that I found today on Instagram. Um, the first is a country you'd love to travel to. I have so many countries I'd love to travel to. But like off the top of my head, one, two, three, go, I'd have to say Greece. I don't know why, but that's up there. And then number two is if you were limited to only using one beauty product, what would it be? I hate this question. I hate things that limit because my whole makeup it just makes me such joy, but having to pick one, I think you guys all know the answer, would definitely be lipstick. Um, so that is my Q&A video. I hope you found that useful and um, enjoyed me rambling. If you have any more questions, if you want to see another one of these videos at some point in the future, let me know. Um, feel free to answer a bunch of these questions, other questions, get to know me down below. So leave me stuff about you down below so I can get to know you guys too. Um, and yeah, let's do three points of positivity. So the first has got to be sort of getting to know you guys better. I never thought that this journey would take me so far. And so it's definitely bringing me great joy that we're at this point. Um, the second point of positivity sort of hand in hand with that is the amazing friends that are going to be lifelong friends that I've met along this journey that I never thought would be possible. So I'm just sort of so blessed and so happy for that. And the third is planning a Wreck-It Ralph date night with my amazing friend April. Um, we're going to find it out. We're, we're working on scheduling, but we're almost there. Um, I think that's all I wanted to tell you. Uh, giant hugs and lots of love for me. And I just want to leave you as always by reminding you that life is just too short to wear boring lipstick. Bye, guys.